Hey y'all, it's my Susanna. Welcome to my live signing. I'm so glad you guys are here today. Uh, let's go on and start off with a little disclaimer. As you know, if you've been following me for a while, I live in the middle of the 100 acre wood and our internet is ridiculous. So if we have internet problems, don't worry. We're going to upload the video later. So we're not just going to quit and pack everybody up and send them home if we have bad internet issues. We're going to upload it later. So stick around and fingers crossed and prayers to the Lord that the Wi-Fi works. But if not, we will be back and we'll upload it later. This is my moderator, the girl. We don't say her name on social media, but I'm going to end up slipping and saying it anyway. This is my daughter, the girl, and she's going to be our uh, lovely assistant today. And she's got some questions that you guys have sent in. Listen, thank you so much for purchasing the book. It is doing so great. It is beyond my expectations of how well it's doing. And uh, I am just so thankful. It's nothing but the grace of God and you guys purchasing the book. And I'm just so excited to have the opportunity to do this today. I have my dear friend Janet back here in the background uh, with the baby and her daughter Kate and the boy back here who's trying to get in his camera time. So we're just going to hang out and just have a little um, informal book signing and chill out and uh, the girl's going to ask me some questions and we're going to sign books, right? Is that what we're going to do? We're going to start, where should I start signing? Just anywhere I want to start signing? Okay, so um, you're going to ask me some questions, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let me say first why I wrote this book um, is for it to be an encouragement and I, I talk a lot about it in the book. Um, after my mother passed away, I just felt uh, the, the Lord was so good to me and so gracious to comfort me after the passing of my mother and through a lot of life struggles. We all have struggles we go through. And so um, I've always been a witty writer and written humorous stuff and been called the modern day Irma Bombeck, what have you. Uh, but I knew I had to write something. And this book is fun. It's witty. But I knew I wanted to write about how the Lord had been so good to me through the passing of my mother and through past struggles in this life and so he he just inspired the words I pray you know I pray Lord let this this book reach people who need hope who need encouragement and I've been reading emails and the reviews on Amazon and I am so pleased and give thanks to God that that seems to be what it's doing it's making people laugh it's restoring joy um, it's given people a fresh look at faith and so <clears throat> it's just been fun it's just fun and I'm proud of the book and um, I'm just so thankful for everybody who's purchased this. Purchased it. Okay. Dear girl. Now, listen. If you can't pronounce a name, try not to butcher it. If you can't pronounce a city, try not to butcher it as well. Okay. okay. Do your best. Okay. Are you nervous? No. Are you sure? Yeah. She's going to be fine. She's going to be fine. This is the softball player and basketball player I always talk about. Okay, girl. Hit it. You got some questions for me? Let's roll. Sherry from Dyer, Tennessee says, do you have a special place where you like to write? Do I have a special place where I like to write? Um, I don't know about a special place I write to, like to write, but I do have a special time I like to write, which is in the midnight hour. I love to write when it's late. Um, that's when I'm the most creative, when everybody's asleep, when uh, I've got some dogs cuddled up beside me, and when these kids are asleep, and when the husband's asleep, and it's nice and quiet, and I can put on uh, my Spotify. What do I listen to when I, when I write? Ray LaMontagne. That's what I like to listen to when I write. Um, so I don't know about a favorite place. Usually on that couch where my friend Janet's sitting. That's usually why I write. That's usually where I make, where the magic happens. All right, baby, next question. Okay, Stacy from Ohio says, my husband and I have been trying for almost two years. What is your best advice during this period of waiting? Trying to have a baby for two years? Mm -hmm. Or trying to, what are they trying to do? <laughs> they trying to have a baby for two years. Best advice in this time of waiting, oh gosh, is to just, you know, that, that little one that Janet back there is holding uh, was, um, six years of prayers at the making. Um, unexplained infertility, had no idea why I couldn't have, I had no problem um, getting pregnant with this one and that one back there. And I just had such a desire to have a third baby. And, and usually it was very easy for me. And when it wasn't, we couldn't understand what it was, figure out why. 
and year after year after year and test and charting and weird stuff uh, and didn't know why I couldn't have a baby. And the and I, there were times that I was very angry with the Lord about that, you know, especially when, you know, and I don't want to sound judgy, but you see people who don't even want to have children or, you know, people who don't take care of their children. You think, God, why do you give those people kids when I would clearly be a great mother and I clearly want one so badly? And I think the only answer is, is I, I, I don't know. Only God knows in his perfect wisdom um, why he allows some some people to struggle with, with infertility or to not have their own children at all. Um, but in the period of waiting, the best thing is to remain faithful because in that period of waiting, in any period where um, doubt can creep in, the enemy will absolutely use that to his advantage. And he will lie to you and tell you that the Lord's not hearing your prayers, that the Lord's not good, that the Lord doesn't care about you. He told me all of those things. Uh, what are you praying for this for? It's never going to happen. And my advice during the time of waiting is to just be patient and to remain faithful. Stay in the Word. Um, keep, the word keep your heart guarded with the Word of God. And know that the Scriptures, that God has a plan for your life, and it is good. And even if you don't have a child by your own womb, um, if you have a uh, God-ordained desire to have a baby, I believe he makes it possible through adoption, through foster care, through whatever it is. But in the waiting, to give out your question, you know how I like to ramble. Um, to answer your question, in the waiting, just remain faithful. Don't let anything shake your faith. Remain faithful. Amen? Is that a good word? Janet, you going you gonna to raise your hands up back there or something? You gonna give a hallelujah? Yes. Okay, good. All right, next question, baby. Stephanie from Arkansas says, "Would you ever consider writing a parenting book?" A parenting book? <laughs> Do you? Let's ask the girl. Should I write a parenting book? <laughs> would I write a good parenting book? I don't know. I think if I wrote a parenting book, it would have to be funny. I think it would have to poke fun at. Uh, I don't think I could be too serious about uh, parenting. It would, uh, and I poke fun at parenting in this book and can't make this stuff up. I talk about parenting. Uh, there's a chapter in here called um, uh, Blessed in This Mess that uh, talks about the, the uh, stress of parenting when, when this one breaks an iPad or an iPod and when that one back there, oh, he never does, <laughs> he never does anything wrong. I'm not going to say he does anything, but uh I don't know about writing a parenting book. I may have to leave that to Dr. Spock. I don't know. I don't know about that. Next question, baby. Megan from Henderson, Tennessee says... Oh, Henderson, Tennessee. Okay. Is it acceptable to skip opening day of baseball season to attend the BAM book signing? No, it's not acceptable to skip. No, absolutely not. You cannot... No. You cannot skip opening day of baseball the bam it'll i want you to buy the book don't get me wrong but the book will be there opening day a baseball season you have to be there to get it on audible and then you can listen to it while you are at opening day and you can just have a friend come to the bam signing and take pictures with me and send them well now that'd probably make you feel bad wouldn't it so don't do that but no you don't you i'll, I'll catch you call, call me I'll find you somewhere else, but you got to go to your opening day at baseball. All right, babe. Taylor from Uniontown, Pennsylvania says, Is your personality just like your mom's? You're so hilarious. I'm so hilarious. Yes. Uh, my mother was absolutely hilarious. I talk about that in the book. My daddy was very, very funny, too. Very witty man. And uh, my mother, my brother, is he keeps everybody in stitches. Um, but my mama was, was really the funniest. She, she would make me laugh to the point, the only person to ever make me laugh so hard that I blacked out. That's absolutely true. I absolutely, she made me laugh about something so hard one time that I fell to the floor and I lost consciousness. You remember, was Mammy funny? Did Mammy keep you laughing all the time? Mm -hmm. She and my mother had such a close bond and they were so funny and they would go to the farmer's market together. What did y'all get at the farmer's market? Donuts. Big, those big donuts um, and barbecue sandwiches. And she would keep her laughing all the time. And uh, she was just, I miss, that's one of the things I miss so much is I miss her wit. And I will tell my husband, I will think of things still that, you know, I'll see 
or go through things and I'll think, gosh, I wish I could tell mama that. Mama would laugh so hard because we had such the same sense of humor and sometimes only she would understand, you know, my jokes and I would understand hers. But I was blessed with two very funny parents and so I guess that's why I get it. Do you think I'm hilarious? Do I make you laugh? Mm -hmm. What is something funny I do that makes you laugh? You don't know anything. Mm -hmm. I don't make you laugh. With it. I mean, it was something I do funny that makes you laugh. Stories. He likes stories. And I just said his name on camera, and he's supposed to be called the boy. Now everybody knows his name. But that's oh, okay. when you make fun of stuff, that's funny. When I make fun of stuff, watch out now. Be careful what you say. Okay, next question. Jackie from Bookfield, Massachusetts says cake or pie? Oh, gosh, cake. Mississippi mud cake with chocolate pie on top. Next. Okay, Jane from Iowa says, what books are you working on now? Um, I just completed um, my second book with Thomas Nelson. Um, the working title is, y'all will probably enjoy this, How May I Offend You Today? That is the working title, and I hope it sticks. Oh, I hope it sticks, because that's a good title, don't you think? Um, and it's about the what a politically correct culture we live in. We can't say anything without offending somebody or making somebody upset. And so it's about that, but it's also got a biblical principle behind it as well. And um, because I think that the Lord delights in laughter. I mean, he tells us to cheer up or, you know, uh, laughter is good medicine. And there, I use actually find some satire in the Bible that is used. And so uh, I think laughter and humor was found in the Bible. And I think people just need to lighten up and laugh about things. And so I'm excited about that book. It's, it's a little snarkier than this one. Um, but... It's still got biblical principle behind it, and I, I, we may have to go back and edit some of some of the stuff. And now that I've read it, uh, now that I've got it done, we may have to go back and make sure that it really doesn't offend anybody. Because I don't want to really offend anybody. But at the same, on the other hand, people are so uptight about things. People get so uptight, and I've just had enough of it. I've just had enough of people being uptight. You can't tell anybody anything without them getting upset about it. And I've just had enough of it. Next question. Karen from Alpharetta, Georgia says, do you have a celebrity crush? Alpharetta, Georgia. I absolutely do. His name is Bradley Cooper. And if he's watching, I'd just appreciate a phone call. That would be real nice. Next. Ashley from Illinois says, do you get any negative comments about antidepressants? Antidepressants. What's the rest of the question say? I take Lexapro and I'm embarrassed. I love that you're so open. I don't mind you sharing my question and saying my name. Would love to say hello to you. I've taken Lexapro since a terrible postpartum, postpartum anxiety OCD issue seven years ago. Today I'm doing very well because of it. And who was this? She said we could say her name? Yeah. Ashley. Ashley from Illinois. Oh, sweet Ashley. Don't you be embarrassed of that. Where's that coffee mug? I have a coffee mug that says Lexapro and Jesus. Don't you be embarrassed of that. If anybody's on antidepressants, raise your hand. Don't you be embarrassed by, um, my pastor has actually said that before. You know, God, and I talk about that in the book. I talk about that. You know, of course we can't substitute um, the truth and the comfort found from God with things of this earth, including antidepressants. We're supposed to go to him and look to him. We can't have antidepressants being our idol, for lack of a better word. But absolutely, the Lord... Um, has put physicians here for us, has put medicines here for us. You know, if I have gangrene, I'm not just going to lay out in the yard and say, God, touch my leg. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go get help, medical help for that. And it's the same with postpartum or anxiety or depression or whatever. I have been anxious since I was about 19 years old and never on any medication for that. Um, I had postpartum with uh, my son, and that was the first time I was on antidepressants, and it was a life changer. It was a blessing, and I got my clarity back, um, got my joy back. Um, so absolutely, I think the Lord uses. Like, don't you be, don't you be embarrassed, Ashley, to take your Lexapro. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, and. Um, I think I don't even I didn't even intend to tell people really that I was on antidepressants. I think it just came out one day. I was like, Lord, I need my Lexapro. And especially since my mother's passed away and since I deal with anxiety and things, 
I, I'm I'm proud of it. I think I had some t-shirts for sale one time that said Jesus and Lexapro on them. So you take that pill and you be proud of it and you praise God that we live in a world where there's modern medicine and you have access to that. And like I said, don't substitute the truth and the Bible and God's comfort and God's peace that passeth all understanding. Don't substitute that for Lexapro, but absolutely. Take your Lexapro Zoloft. Uh, what else we got? Prozac, whatever you need to take, sister, take it. Smarties, Lifesavers, whatever is good for you, Nutella, whatever. Take it if it makes you feel better. Not cocaine or anything like that. Don't take that for the love of God. Okay, next question. Next question. Elizabeth from Buckeye, Arizona says, what's your favorite Bible verse? Oh, my goodness. I don't know if I have one favorite verse, but I'll tell you um, my favorite my favorite. Um, Chapter in the Bible is the 91st Psalm. Is it working? We're good. Um, is the 91st Psalm. Uh, that is a um, passage about protection and about how um, the Lord um, watches over us. And my mother used to keep that Bible verse. We had somebody had um, attempted to break into our home one time. It was absolutely terrifying. And my mama prayed the 91st Psalm over us it is a it is a passage about protection and she used to leave after that attempted break-in she used to leave her bible open to the 91st psalm right there at the window that some crazy nut job tried to break into while we were sleeping at night and so i grew up you know knowing that there was power in the word and um, seeing her claim that and she would put her hands, I've done it to my own kids, put, laid my hands on them and just prayed the 91st Psalm over them for protection and for uh, long life and to be watched over and that the Lord will carry them. And so it is a powerful verse. I'll tell you another thing um, is I had suggested a friend of mine's um, son was having night tremors. And I said, you know what? You write that 91st uh, Psalm down that nothing in the terror of night will come near him and you write that passage down and you put it under his mattress and she did and she said absolutely that it helped um so i believe in the power of not only speaking the word and reading the word but writing it down write down the word of god write down um verses and passages and scripture and his promises and put them under your kid's mattress put it i i wrote Psalm, not the whole passage it's a very long passage but i wrote psalm 91 do you remember that where did i write that on your softball helmet. Do you remember that? Because I was so terrified she was going to get hit in the face with a softball or get hit in the head with a softball. So she was standing in the dugout and my son too and they had Psalm 91 written on their helmet and I believe in that. I think that's a powerful thing. So not particularly a verse but 91st Psalm is a beautiful, beautiful promise and a, a beautiful song about protection. Okay. Desire from Florida says... Desiree. Oh. Desiree hey, desire. Says, what do you hope your readers get from your book? What do I desire my readers get from my books? Or what do I desiree my readers get from my books? I bet Desiree loves that. Desiree, have you ever been called desire before? Huh? Only in the... Uh, never mind. Okay, what, what was the question? I got lost on her name. What do you hope your readers get from your book? I hope that they have a renewed faith. That's what I hope. I hope they laugh. I hope they are encouraged. And I hope they have um, joy, especially if, it, if they haven't experienced any joy in a while. I hope that they um, realize God is good and that just because we live in a fallen world and have troubles and have problems doesn't mean that um, there's not a father that's not looking out for us and that doesn't love us. He absolutely loves us and he works all things together for good. That's the upside to life's downs. Did I just give the whole thing away? I don't know. All right, next question. Diana from Phoenix, Arizona says, When did you and your husband meet and get married? I love and adore you. Oh, she loves him. How sweet. Uh, my husband and I met. I don't know if y'all should be in here for this. Okay, Natalie. Uh, my husband and I met at a... Uh, place called uh, TJ Mulligan's, which I talk about this in the book. I talk about this in the book. We met um, on New Year's Eve while we were uh, um, dancing to Purple Rain by Prince. That's where we met. And um, 
we got married about four years later in a little bitty quaint wedding chapel. And I write, I have a whole chapter about this uh, that's, that's funny and uh, about uh, how we met and there was some, I was sprayed head to toe in body glitter. Does that make you feel awkward to know that I had on body glitter when I met your father? Do you feel okay? Bennett, do you feel okay about that? <laughs> he said, I don't even know what that means. Thank God he doesn't know what that means. You got to wear body glitter. Jay, don't you have to wear body glitter? You, do you not remember the body glitter? You know, but I mean, not head to toe, but like I had on a, a, a kind of a scoop neck, and so you spray it, and so I was kind of glistening on the dance floor, and it caught his eye, and he loved it. God bless him. He loved every second of it. And, uh... Let's just, next question, Natalie. <laughs> Go to next question. Becca from Port City, Did you Kansas. wear body glitter? Sometimes. You don't look like type to wear body glitter, Jay. Just on the, yeah, not head to toe. Yeah, okay. Okay, next. Becca from Port City, Kansas says, how different was it writing nonfiction versus fiction? Which do you prefer? Which do I prefer? Um, I prefer fiction. I absolutely. Now, this was fun to write. This was fun to write. This was a lot like blogging, which I enjoy blogging. Um, but fiction is my passion. I, I love lying, for lack of, I love just to sit around and make up stories uh, and get away with it and not call it lying. Um, fiction is fun. I would love to get back into fiction, and I have four books that are self-published that are all fiction. And it's just fun to let your imagination run wild. I love to read fiction. And so um, this was harder to write. Um, because this is real raw and vulnerable stuff and, um, fiction, you can, d this was harder to write. That's for sure. Um, but it was, I mean, people, it, it's gratifying to see that, that this nonfiction book, how it's helping people and touch and people are loving it and all that kind of stuff. I don't think, I mean, it's more rewarding than fiction. I don't think anybody's life has been changed by a fiction book, unless it was Fifty Shades of Grey or something, but I don't, what are you, what are you laughing about? What do you know about that? Um, but I really love fiction. I'm beating the dead horse. I love fiction, and I would love to get back into to writing more fiction. Okay. Where can you purchase your book? Where can I purchase your uh -huh. what book? Your book that you just wrote. Oh, this book. <laughs> oh, premiercollectibles.com slash Susanna. You can purchase this uh, signed copy at premiercollectibles.com slash Susanna. Um, get yours right now, right this minute. We live? We still going live? Everything looking good with the internet? Okay, thank God. I Praise the Lord. Send a comment to the top so people know. Okay, all right, good. Marvin from Ohio says, I don't have a question. I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to sign this for me and for sharing your family with us in internet land. God bless you, Susanna. Oh, thank you, Marvin. Isn't that sweet? Marvin, try to get folks to be start crying up in here. All right, go ahead. Uh, Tamara from Texas. Tamara. Tam is, is Tamara and Desire, are they good friends? Tamara and Desiree. Tamara and Desiree. Tamara and Desire. Okay, next. Go. She says, do you ever Google yourself? No. <laughs> no, but they have. He's go. He said Google Ma. He asked, didn't you ask Siri one time about Mama? Oh, that was me. That was you. Yeah. What came up? I don't know. And you don't. You don't even remember oh, what came up. When Daddy got his phone. Oh yeah, when Daddy got his phone. Yeah, he did. He Googled me. Um, I did see that. Um, this is funny. I have Googled myself before. I mean, I don't make a habit of doing it daily. I don't wake up and say, Oh my God, hey Google, Susanna, what's Susanna Lewis doing? Um, but one of the popular questions on Google was, um, whoa, Susanna's net worth. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Whoa, Susanna's net worth. And I was wearing blue jeans I bought at Walmart when I Googled that up. So that should tell you, whoa, Susanna's net worth. Okay. Jolene from North. Jolene. Jolene. Jolene from Minnesota says, other than being an author... What is another occupation that you would love to do for a day? Oh, goodness. That's a hard question, Jolene. Jolene. Um, I don't know. What is another? I, I've always, that's going to sound strange. I've always wanted to do this, really. Um, I think 
I would like to probably work at a Hobby Lobby for a day for the discount. Probably the employee discount one day. Okay, next question. Jerusa from South Carolina says, What is it that you forgot about motherhood? Oh, what is it I forgot about motherhood since having the baby? Is that what that means? Um, why is your school calling? Are they, are they wondering why you're not in school? <laughs> <laughs> Tell them to look on Facebook. Um, I had forgotten how wonderful babies smell. Is she dirty? She's she is she's pooped, so she's not smelling very good right now. She she smells a little right. Well, beside from that, you can go change her if you want. Okay, <laughs> that's a good segue. She's finishing up. Oh, she's finishing up. Um, when they don't, when they're not pooping their pants, I love the way. But I had forgotten how great a baby's head smells, and I had forgotten how sweet their faces are when. They're dreaming. It is so sweet. She just smiles all the time. Little no, all those little noises. You know, I was. We got a puppy, TJ, a few months ago. Well, before she was born, a few months before she was born, and he made the sweetest little puppy noises. And I, that's when I remembered. I thought, oh gosh, this baby I'm about to have is gonna make these same kind of, not exactly the same. They're going to communicate. Yeah, that's what he said. He said they're going to communicate through baby noises, the puppy and the baby. Um, anyway, I forgot what sweet little noises. The smell and the sounds are just so sweet. Oh, and just being just in love with them. I mean, I'm still in love with these two, of course. But just, just, oh, I forgot. And I also forgot how quickly it goes by. I forgot how quick because, gosh, it doesn't seem like that long ago that they were that size anyway. I'm gonna get all emotional. Okay. Onda from Indiana says, where were you born and are your children raised with Southern traditions and cooking? Yes. I was born in um, right here uh, in West Tennessee in a little town called Brownsville, Tennessee. Um, and the, my children are absolutely raised with Southern traditions. This is something, we're gonna address this right now, Natalie. But what? We're gonna dress this. She doesn't like mashed potatoes. Yes, I do. No, I you do. don't. Yes, I do. I do like mashed potatoes. Since when? I used to not like mashed potatoes. Since no. when? No, I've always no. I just don't lie on camera. No, I no, I just don't like mashed potatoes. Since when? You've I, I just ha I just do. She doesn't like cornbread. Yes, I do. You're lying in front of yes, everybody. I do. No, you're not. I do like cornbread. I just don't eat it. Do you like mashed potatoes and cornbread? Come here. Yeah. You do. Okay, she doesn't like, you don't like butter beans, you don't like green beans. Yes, I do like green beans. I hate She's I like green, green beans. beans. She's like lying green in front of everybody. No, I'm not. Black eyed peas and chow chow. Those are gross. Let's see, this is, I don't know who she belongs to because, I mean, when I was her age, and this is the thing, I cook up all this good southern food on holidays, don't I? Don't we, stop, <laughs> I, don't we slave in this kitchen. For two days, cooking up all this food. Ask me what she eats. Ham and a roll. No, that's she won't not eat true. Any of the casseroles. That's not true. I eat I none eat of the vegetables. I eat dressing. Ham and a roll. You I get that dressing. at a gas station. No, no, I eat dressing. You don't. Yes, I do. She's Mama, lying. I do. Ever since, ever since I made the dressing that year, I, I got that is one of our traditions. She always crumbles, even though she doesn't eat it. I always help my mama make dressing, and so she's always crumbled up the cornbread and four cold biscuits. That's what's in our dressing. I don't know why they have to be. My mom always said, your cornbread and four cold biscuits. I don't know why the cold biscuits. I don't know what the point is, but you do what your mama tells you. So she crumbles up the cornbread and the four, four, gold bis four cold biscuits, and then she'll eat ham and a roll. No, I get dressing. I'm going to video next okay. Christmas, and I'm... No, just because you put it on your plate doesn't mean, yeah, you no, get dressing. No, yes, I do. You don't actually eat the dressing. Yes, I do. Lies. Okay. Straight from the pits of hell. Okay, next question. Kathy from Burlington, Wisconsin says, what is your favorite activity to do with your family, and what was your best vacation ever with your family? Our favorite activity, what do you think it is? What do we do as a family? Go to the ball field. Go to the ball field. And, um... 
I love it. I love going to the ball field. I love packing up every – I haven't been able to go to a um, softball game this year because the baby still is five weeks old today. But um, I love packing up and getting ready to go to the ball field and watching her play in the – in the sweltering heat for seven hours at a ball tournament. I love that. What is one of your favorite things we do as a family? Mm -hmm. He likes to go anywhere with a, he likes for us to go stay in a hotel, no matter where it is. We could go down, oh, the, do we could go down the street. Their hotels are neat. We could go down the street and stay in a hotel. Do you remember the time he said, I want to, wait, you said, I want to stay someplace with what, a swimming pool? And sleep. Where did you say? What was it you said that that time? We had we had a swimming pool at our old house. We had a swimming pool, and he comes in there fussing about wanting to go on a vacation somewhere. I want to go stay someplace that has a swimming pool, and it was something else we have at had at home. I said we have all that right here at home. Why do you want to go pay one hundred nineteen dollars a night to go do something you can do right here at home? Oh no, yeah. I did not say that. Yeah, you did say that. Um, but he just likes for us to go anywhere out of town. It could be, we could go to the hotel, or anywhere out of the house. We could go to the hotel down the street and stay tonight. I don't care wherever we go. Okay. Uh, our best vacation ever. The beach. Uh, we go to the beach a lot. We go to the, go you can't tell secrets on the camera. We go to the, uh, Gulf Coast a lot. Don't start arguing on camera. I'm not. Oh my gosh, I'm going to end up hitting somebody on, on the video. They're going to call us. Department of Child Services on live sign. Have y'all ever had anybody beat their kids on a live sign and so far you can't make it up? You can't make this stuff up. All right, next question. Sherry from Minnesota says, "Do you in, did you inherit your sense of humor from your mom or your dad?" Uh, I think both. I mean, I said a minute ago that they're both very, very witty people. Um, so I would say both. I'm glad I had. You know, they they uh. They would, uh, ne they never tried to one, they played off each other well. My daddy would say something, then my mom would come back with something funny. I talk about that in the book, how life was like a sitcom with them. So I'm glad, and I think our life is like a sitcom. My daughter, and we do that a lot, don't we? We make jokes and play off each other. And my husband, he's funny, but he doesn't know he's funny. He'll just say something really dry, and we're all falling out laughing. He's like, whoa. But uh, we play off each other pretty well, too. Rhonda from Clearwater, Florida says, you are awesome. Thank you, Rhonda from Clearwater, Florida. Clearwater, Florida is awesome. And I've been there many times. Stacia from Oklahoma City in Oklahoma says, not a question. Use unhook the trailer when your daughter is rounding the bases in a slow fashion. Thank you for being you. Unhook the trailer. When you're right, you know what that means? No. Let off your what you're you're pulling heavy weight. Oh. We always say that what do we what do we say? Uh like you're pulling a uh, five pound bag of flour around your ankles. So we say when you're, I'm not making fun. I say when anybody's running slow. So you got a five pound, five pound bag of potatoes around your ankles. Unhook the trailer. That's a good one. Unhook the trailer. James from Mississippi says, do your kids call you the mom or the lady? They do not. What do you call me? Mama. Mama. What do you call me? Mama. Sometimes he'll say, hey lady. Don't you no, say don't. you do so? You no, always does. do voices for TJ and stuff. Yeah. You say it. Hey, lady. Oh yeah, my dogs call me Hey Lady. Sure. It's me speaking for my dogs. How does anybody what else talk? Does anybody else talk for their dogs? No, they call me Mama, and I do call her the girl and her the boy, and that one the baby. And people ask me why I don't use their names on social media, and it's just for I mean I. I I mean, you can obviously see them, and if you read the book, their names are in the book. I don't know. It started out that way. I always called her the girl and the boy way before I wrote this book because I didn't want somebody to try to steal their identity or what have you or know their names. And so it just stuck, and that's that's that. I don't know why people get so mad. Why do they want to know? Well, they want their social security number. and Everybody, people are getting mad and unfollow me because I didn't reveal her name on the day she was born. Getting mad. What is wrong with you? Why do you want to know what's your baby's name? I'm not going to come and ask you what's your baby. Hey, what's your baby's name? I'm not going to do that. I was like, do they want to see a picture of her crowning? What do they want from me? What do they want? All right. Her name is the baby. That's all you need to know. Okay, go ahead. 
Denise from Sparta, Tennessee says, fighting breast and bone cancer, any tips for staying positive? Oh, bless your heart. Keep your faith, dear. And even when I, this, what this whole book is about, is about storms in life um, and how we're not promised an easy life. Um, just like Paul went through tri trials and was imprisoned and even executed, um, you know, he went through a whole lot of stuff. So just keep your faith. Um, just pray. I, pr I, I will lift your name up in prayer. What's her name, Jack? Natalie? What's her name? Go back. Look, see, what are y'all doing? Denise. Um, just, uh, I will mention you in prayer. You know, just ask for the Lord to comfort you, to give you a positive outlook. There is so much joy to still be found. And I am praying for your healing. Um, just stay in the Word. Get in the Word and drink up the Word like you have never drank it up before. Get in it and say, God, just show me what you want me to know. And get in it because there are so many positive things in the word that's how you stay positive is knowing the truth and knowing what god says and his promises are good and in jeremiah he said he had great plans for you um even when you were just in your own mother's womb and he, this is no surprise to him cancer is never a surprise to god he knows and you know every all things that happen um no matter how debilitating if it brings you closer to the lord it's absolutely worth it so just stay in the Word and stay faithful. Angie from Cleveland, Georgia says, What is your secret to keeping it all together and not falling apart? Lexa Pro. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Amy from And Arkansas. Jesus. Jesus said Lexa Pro. Okay. Amy from Arkansas says, No questions. Lexa Pro owes me some money, don't they? Don't, should I get some retributions or something? Okay, go ahead. Amy says, no questions. Just wanted to let you know that I love watching your videos and can't wait to read your new book. Thank you very much, Amy. God bless you, sweetheart. <laughs> Robin from Wyoming says, congrats on your book and your baby. Thank you. Julie from North Carolina says, hey, Suzanne, are you the only funny one in your family? No, absolutely not. This guy. She's pretty hilarious. <laughs> I wish... She she's being nervous on and rightfully so. I mean, this is our first time to do it. But when she and this one, when this one and that girl back there get together, it's absurd. They chit chat. They they are the funniest thing. I sometimes think they have a problem. I don't know what it is, but they're just very comfortable. I love their friendship. It reminds me of of my friendships when I was a kid. I just love to watch them together and how silly. And funny they are. She says hilarious stuff. I've always said that she was going to have a comedy special. Um, but this one right here, too. This this guy, tell him what you did the other day when we rode by the pasture cows and you were eating a cheeseburger. What did you do? He kind of sl he slumped out at his seat and he said, it's not what you think. He's funny. He comes up with the funniest stuff. And he keeps us laughing all the time. He loves, what's that old show you love to watch? What's the old show that I watch? What is it? Um, what? He comes, he's, a little, he's like a little old man. Oh, in the heat of the night. He's a little old man. He loves in the heat of the night from the 80s. You remember with Carol O'Connor. And he comes home. He comes in my room the other night. He said, let's watch some heat. <laughs> and jumps down on the bed, pops down the bed. I'm like, let's watch some heat. You're nine. What are you doing? Watch it in the heat of the night. The heat of the night. <laughs> he has the funniest personality and the funniest little jokes and one-liners he they're both hilarious and uh my brother is incredibly funny as well he's just a funny funny guy and my husband too so we're surrounded by funny people i love doing life with funny people i have funny friends janet's funny 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 and uh i just like being life's better when you're around funny people i think what do you think Yes. Next question. Okay. We're going to play the game. Oh, we're going to play a game. What's the game called, uh, The Girl? 22 questions in two minutes. 22 questions in two minutes. You sure? You want me to play it? Yeah. Okay. Do we have, like, a clock? Uh, do we have a clock somewhere? No. Okay. I can't okay. write and answer questions at the same time. I don't even know if I've been signing my own name half this time. <laughs> half this time. Okay, go. Okay. Where were you born? Tennessee. Who would you want to play in a movie? Who would you want? Are we like time? Play play? Is this like movie? Family Feud at the end where Steve Harvey's going? We're running out of time. No. Okay. 
Who would you want to play you in a movie? Reese Witherspoon. What was your first job? Uh, dry cleaners. What is your biggest fear? Mm, I'm not gonna say. Go. <laughs> Who makes you laugh the most? Bennett. What is the only thing you need to have in your fridge at all times? Oh. One my. thing, not only thing. One thing. One thing I have to have in my fridge at all times? Yeah. Oh my cheese. We never have. Well, yes, we do. We always have yes, cheese. All kinds what of blue your, cheese. What is your greatest? Pepper Jack. I'm be like, Bubba your, on Forrest Gump talking about all the cheeses. Forrest Instead of Gump. shrimp. <laughs> Boil it. Okay, go. What is your greatest accomplishment? This. Who is the most interesting person you met recently? Oh, that's, I could get into the, it was a little old lady with purple hair. That's all I'm going to tell you. And she was the best. She was the best. Okay. She was pumping what is, gas. What is your middle name? Brown. What is your biggest pet peeve? Uh, when you get stuff out of the pantry and put the empty box that's back. That's not me. That's it's you Bennett. next. That's Bennett. That's what Bennett does. <coughs> Bennett doesn't eat Z, Z bars. Yes, he does. You do. You always eat the Z Did bars. You know what? Mm -hmm. what is the last book you read? I'm reading right now Lisa Turkhurst. It's not supposed to be this way. What is your favorite hobby? Uh, p writing, of course, and the, playing the piano. What is your guilty pleasure? Fudge rounds. Do you have any hidden talents? Um, do I have any hidden talents? I can play um, the drums on rock band on expert mode. Okay. Do they even still make rock band? I don't think so. What color is That was an old talent. What uh, color is your toothbrush? Purple. Blue. Something. Hey, you should know because you use it. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> what is your secret snack? My secret snack? Mm -hmm. That I have. Uh, Girl Scout Thin Mint Cookies. Mm. How do you take your coffee? Well, with a lot of creamer. A lot of creamer, but I'm trying to, to do healthy and um, cut out my sugar. So I have just been suffering through with just half and half and what some is, trivia. What is the last movie you saw in theaters? Um, what was that we went to see in theaters? How to Train Your Dragon. How to Train Your Dragon. What's, his, what's that thing's name? I don't know. It was great. Toothless. No, it was. Toothless. Was Somebody could be watching that broke that movie. You don't you better watch what you say. It was wonderful. Next. What is the least? What is the last gift you gave? The last gift I gave. Mm -hmm. um, we gave his friend Mason some Beyblades. What <laughs> cause is dear to your heart? What cause is dear to my heart? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! Uh, well, now I'm gonna look like like I don't have any. I have several causes dear to my heart. You're right, Susanna. Why don't you just say what it is? Um, gosh. I'm going to say, I don't, I don't know. Um, what's something, missions is it called? We have a lot of friends that go on missions. Um, 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 the, the people that we have, there's a call. Well, I don't mean, is the two minutes up? Because I'll end up, missions, go next. <laughs> What is and doll animals, homeless pets. What is the number one on your bucket list? Uh, Great Britain. Where do you want to go that you've never been? Great Britain. Was that all the questions? Uh -huh. Did we get it done in 22 minutes? 22 minutes. It's two minutes. Oh. Okay. Ask me a couple more questions and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll uh, tidy it up. Okay. Uh, Jared from Beach Creek, Kentucky says, what's your funniest childhood memory? What's my funniest childhood memory? Well, there's several in the book. Um, I don't know, Jared. I don't know. What's that commercial with somebody's name, Jared? She went to Jared. Subway? Jared went to Subway? Now I've gotten off on the... I don't know. Jared, read the book. There's a whole bunch of funniest memories in here. A whole bunch of funniest... Uh, one involves a dead chicken. That's all we got to say about that. Okay. Sarah from Baton Rouge, Louisiana says, How do you stay positive and faithful about having kids when there's so much negative negativity about children? Negativity about children? Uh, talking about it in the world. Uh, 
Well, because the Lord's taking care of my kids, and the kids are a blessing. They're such a joy. Look at them over here arguing. Somebody said, hey, that's not your iPad, so don't be hitting her with it. <laughs> no, he found a funny one. Okay, what's the funny one? Hannah from Waldo, Arkansas says, what is your opinion of Peppa Pig? Peppa Pig. <laughs> Uh, for a dog. Yeah. Peppa Pig. Uh, I bet she's pretty good on a biscuit. That's what I bet. <laughs> That's my pee, baby. All right, one or two more now. We're going to wrap it up. Michelle from Louisiana says, how long does it take you to write a book? Are you constantly writing thoughts down? Yes, I'm constantly writing thoughts down. Absolutely, I am. And some of them are garbage, but I write them down anyway. Um, there was an episode of Seinfeld where he had a dream and... In his dream, he woke up and it was hilarious and he went and wrote it down and scribbled it down really quickly and then he couldn't read his own writing. I have had that happen. I have actually had that happen, Jerry Seinfeld. And um, I'm always writing down notes. I've got post-it notes. I've got note cards, stuff in my purse. And as for writing a book, and a lot of that sometimes gets used. Not always, but sometimes. As far as writing a book, it took me about six months to write this book and it took about five months to write, write my last one. Uh, for fiction, it usually doesn't take that long because I get so into fiction. It usually only takes me about two or three months to write fiction when I'm really into it. All right, one more question. Fig figure, find a good one. Scroll okay. through and find a good one. Who are you going to pick? Um, Audrey, I am. Adrian. Adrian. Yo, Adrian. Adrian okay. from Georgia says, what kind of bracelets are you always wearing? You wear a bunch I of I love it. Somebody noticed my bracelets. What are they? Pura Vida. Pura Vida. We are in the, which I'm not endorsed by Pura Vida, but call me. Uh, we are in the Pura Vida bracelet of the month. Is that what it's called? Monthly club. Yeah. Month. Have you got any on your arms? No, I took them off when I went to bed. Last she night. took them off no, when I she went to bed. I have a bunch though. Uh, Pura Vita bracelets, a lot of them mean things. There's one for infertility, and then um, I also have a bracelet that a friend gave me when my dog Newt died a few months ago that has a paw print on it, so I always wear it. But I, I switch them out a lot, and I'm so glad somebody noticed that. That's I love it. It's wonderful. Okay. Is that been, did that go by that quick? Oh, my gosh. It went by that quick. I didn't even get done, but we're going to get them done. Don't worry, we're not just going to throw these off to the side and say too late. Thank y'all so much. for And the baby was so good, and every, nobody threw up or got sick or passed out. You did a wonderful job, my dear. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so, so much for coming and for joining us. Thank you for purchasing the book again. I pray that this book encourages you and blesses you and not only makes you laugh, it is humorous, it's fun, not only makes you laugh, but also points you towards um, eternal joy found in Jesus. And so I'm just so thankful for the opportunity. The book is holding pretty steady between 13 and 15 on Amazon, so thank y'all for that. And uh, just thank you. I've been dreaming of, dreaming, did somebody just fly out the window? I have been dreaming of this since I was eight years old, and for this to come to fruition is just mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling. And to have my kids here with me and my friends and everybody. So thank y'all so much. PremierCollectibles.com slash Susanna to get your autographed copy. And I'm so thankful to God that the Wi-Fi didn't mess up on us. So thank you for that. God bless.